Tammy was a sweetheart. Tammy, at least the Tammy I knew, would probably be rated in my book a 10 out of 10. When 49-year-old Tammy Daybell died unexpectedly at home in October, it was a shock to those who knew her. It was just strange. Uh, I didn't know she had any problems. Things would only get stranger. We were shocked that when we heard that Tammy had passed away. I think we were more shocked when we did, heard that there was not an autopsy that was ordered. Now, her husband Chad faces charges related to the disappearances of his second wife's children. The recent discovery of the remains of J.J. Ballow and Tylee Ryan on Chad's property made news in Idaho and beyond. Clearly, there's been a lot of publicity and the chance of bias being spread throughout the community community is absolutely tremendous but it's not just the children's deaths police are investigating chad's marriage to lori vallow daybell just weeks after tammy's passing raised suspicion about his first wife's death police were suspicious enough to take another look at tammy's death exhuming her body in december Chad does not face any charges related to Tammy's death, but will a jury in Chad's trial be able to set that aside when they hear the case involving J.J. and Tylee? Some people just actually want vengeance for, for somebody, either because they don't like the defendant, because of something they think he's done in the past, or he's got away with in the past. The Daybells married in 1990 and started a family in Springville, Utah. The couple had five children and launched a publishing company that became a platform for Chad's fringe religious beliefs. That's how Lori Vallow found him. In 2015, Chad and Tammy moved to East Idaho. Tammy became a school librarian beloved by staff and students. Their family was extremely close. Uh, the kids would come over, you know, almost every Sunday for dinner. Tammy seemed very happy. Then on October 9th, 2019, Tammy called 911 to report that a masked man shot at her with a paintball gun outside the family home. That just don't happen. Ten days later, the Daybell family changed forever. October 19th, we did respond to uh, an unattended death at the uh, Daybell home, and uh, Tammy Daybell was uh, deceased at uh, that time. According to Tammy's obituary, she passed away peacefully in her sleep. No autopsy was performed. Weeks later, Chad married Lori. In a conversation that Melanie Gibb, Lori's friend, recorded, Chad offered this explanation for his wife Tammy's death. Tammy had been getting weaker and sick, and I begged her to go to the doctor. There's, she just, her heart was failing her. She was physically falling apart, but she hates doctors. So. Mm -hmm. She just passed away. But authorities aren't so sure, and the investigation into Tammy's death continues, raising questions about how it could influence the jury pool in Chad's trial. That will be a continuing saga that, again, um, spreads the risk of tremendous contamination in a very small county. Four words that stick out to me from Chad Dable on this. She just passed away. You know, she just passed away. It's absurd. Absurd. All right, let's bring in the best team of legal journalists in the business. Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter, special contributor to Court TV Ashley Banfield, and Court TV anchors Ted Rollins and Julie Grant. Uh, Chanley, let me start with you. What, what is the latest right now in the investigation into the death of Tammy Daybell? Well, we found out in April that the Idaho Attorney General's Office was taking over the investigation into Tammy Dave Bell's death and citing possible conspiracy, attempted murder, and or murder in the investigation into Lori and Chad Daybell. Now, she passed away, Tammy Daybell, October 19th, and her body was exhumed a little more than two months later, December 11th. Now we know December 12th who passed away. That was Alex Cox, Lori Vallow's brother. But her body was exhumed and autopsy was done. And it's the results have not been released in this investigation. We checked back into the Attorney General's office today to see if they would give us any more details or leads or how far they are along in the investigation. We didn't get much of any. They told us that the investigation is ongoing. Our office will have no additional comment. So that's all we know. 
that was still under investigation could be pending charges and who knows what this autopsy may involve or may lead to Vinny. but when i've been in rexburg idaho madison county when you attend these memorials and the vigils tammy daybell's picture is right up there next to jj and tiley so definitely the community knew her and they loved her and obviously think that her death is connected somehow to the children's and as you mentioned you're out there in east idaho um and, and is there a chance if you if you move this case from one county to the next? I mean, is there a chance that it could just be moved like one county over uh, in, in this situation? That's a great question, because currently the conspiracy charges of Chad and Lori are both in Fremont County, the neighboring county, contigu contiguous county to Madison County. In fact, the courthouses are only about 20 minutes apart, very close together. And it's a it's a Sometimes when you have a change of any motion, they move it to the next county or a county over. But here, it's almost as if they are connected. We have Fremont is probably a population of around 13,000 people, very, very rural. Now, Madison County neighboring below is about 39,000, 30,000 just in Rexburg because it is home to the largest university in Idaho, you know, Brigham Young University, Idaho. So even though it's a little more populous, it still may not be a good option. In fact, I spoke to a jury consultant today. Let's see what she had to say. Because there is extensive continuing media coverage in a very small county like Fremont County, uh, what happens is the risk of exposure is obviously greatly increased. And, uh, you know, clearly most librarians are well loved. They, they don't have anything nefarious in their background. And people are going to follow this case uh, very, very carefully. So obviously the impact to a fair and impartial trial of Chad Daybell, uh, that really puts that at risk. So whether it's Madison County or Fremont County, there's going to be that bias. Now, a judge could certainly look at the fact that Madison County is basically three times larger than Fremont County. So the likelihood that you could get a fair and impartial juror may be slightly better in Madison County, but that's ultimately, I think, what uh, a judge would be looking at in, in either one of their cases. You know what's interesting, just a little history, and to tell you exactly how close Fremont and Madison County are, in the early 1900s, they were one county. They didn't separate into two counties until the early 1900s, so very small, connected community there. And we are we do know a change of venue motion is pending for at least Chad Daybell's case because there was a stipulation after his preliminary hearing between the attorneys that they would have 60 days to file the change of venue motion that could be granted by a judge or the judge could say let's just try it and see if we can find 12 people here in Fremont County who have not made up their mind yet all right uh Ashley let me ask you you know the death of Tammy Daybell and everything else in this case, I, I don't care where you try it, when you tell the story, when the jury hears the story, um, they're going to hear about these other people. And, and jurors aren't stupid, right? You marry someone two weeks after someone else died and the, and, and the person you married's kids are buried in your backyard. They're going to be able to put two and two together, whether they're from Fremont, Madison, or Boise. Yeah, uh, or Mars. And, and I think what's critical here is is that I fully expect Chad Dable is going to be charged with Tammy's murder. So there is a pretty good chance that all of the potential jury pool all around that state is going to hear about two sets uh, of charges, um, maybe three. <laughs> you really don't know at this point. But I can tell you that a source close to the investigation has told me that they are looking very, very closely at the different possible toxicology um, issues with regard to Tammy Daybell's um, exhumed body and that autopsy running panel after panel to try to find out if there was something that perhaps led to her death or was the precursor to her death. And I think that's fascinating. That really tells you that they're looking real closely to find out if that young woman, and I say young woman because she was training for a 5K uh, by one account and by many accounts she was regularly running marathons at 49 years old. You don't just pass away in your sleep. Uh, and you don't just have failing health um, if you're training for a 5K. So I do fully expect that there could be murder charges filed against Chad. And he may be facing two fronts and uh, a defense on two fronts. But yeah, 
jurors aren't dumb. They'll hear this. It'll stick with them. It'll be in their gut. And most jurors go with their gut in the end. Julie Grant, I think it's fair for prosecutors to tell the whole story, even in the case involving the remains in the backyard. I think it's fair for the jury to hear the whole story about, yeah, Chad was married to a woman named Tammy. Uh, this woman, Tammy, she died. And then two weeks later, he married this woman, Lori. And they'll know that he was having an affair with Lori because they'll hear the testimony about the smooch session over at the BYU track. So I think it's fair game. And, and, I, th and I think it's going to absolutely hurt Chad Daybell. Yes, if you're on the prosecution side, absolutely. You want as much in as possible to give that jury as much context as possible about this crazy world that Chad and Lori Daybell uh, were existing in. If it, I think what the hook is, if the defense were to object, because of course, if you're the defense, you want to keep the testimony as tight and as narrow as possible to just focus in on the narrative between Chad and Lori and what happened to the children. But let's just say that you know this is being disputed and the court is hearing this in the way of you know motions in limine. I think the hook is those text messages. The text messages that Chad Daybell sent to Tammy Daybell about, oh, I had to bury this raccoon that came out in the middle of the day in the pet cemetery in the backyard. That's evidence that's coming in. And so now all of a sudden the jury hears, oh, there's a wife. Oh, there's a wife. And, and if they don't get an explanation as to what happened to that wife, that may, may make them wonder more. Um, so, y yes, I think it's going to come in. I think they're, to what extent it comes in, that's going to be up to the judge. He may try to keep it narrow. But, yes, they're going to know that he had a wife and they're going to hear that testimony from Melanie Gibb about when when they met and the, you know, the affair and all of that. I think it it does come in because it lays context and it goes to motivation that the prosecutors are going to try to lay out. But I think for Chad Dabo, I think, you know, the fair jury, I think, is the least of his concerns because all these investigations – for homicide charges are still pending. So uh, I think before we put the car before the horse, um, he's, he's got to worry about the charges that may be forthcoming right now. Yeah, Ted, I, I still can't believe that they did not hide this affair from Melanie Gibb. I, I don't know why you would have a PDA right in front of Melanie Gibb. Who knows? Who, who, who's friends with you because of her religious beliefs? I mean, how... What do you think is going on? Were they just so love struck or, or what was going on that they thought it was OK that we'll just flaunt this uh, extramarital uh, relationship right in front of Melanie Gibb? I think they didn't give Melanie Gibb credit for being intelligent. Uh, and they thought, oh, she's just a follower of Chad and I's and um, she'll go along with anything. Um, she goes along with everything we tell her. Um, this will be fine, too. Huge miscalculation on their point. I don't know that he's going to face charges, though. They dropped the ball by not doing an autopsy two months later. Uh, if they had something, you would think they would want to charge him for murder. Uh, I am really skeptical on whether or not he is going to face murder charges in the case of his, uh, his, uh, of his wife, Tammy.